Here, I'm gonna show you a simple, robust way to visually go through your data. So we go from a nice static table down here to something that we can filter and have it update on a chart as well as custom formulas over here. And I'm going to show you how to make this work for your data set so it doesn't have to look exactly like what I've got. And this should provide you with a versatile set of tools so that we can even add new values down here and it's going to update throughout the entire spreadsheet, the chart and all of the formulas above here. And the best part about this is that it does not require any VBA. There's no macros, no coding. However, if you would like to automate your workbooks and save yourself hours of time where you can click a single button and have so much done, even exporting and automatically emailing, automatically going through your data and filtering it and more, then check out my full VBA course. I've got a link to it below this video, and it's going to take you from beginner and intermediate level all the way to expert level. But now let me go ahead and clear this, and let's start with a basic set of data and build it out. Now here we've got a data with pretty much no formatting attached to it. And this is what you might get when you export data into a CSV file and then open it into Excel. So let's start from scratch. I'm going to add a bold right here. And the very first thing that we want to do is to turn this into an actual table. That's what's going to give us all of the power of automatically updating. So we click in here and hit Control T or go to Insert and Table. And if your table has headers, which it really, really should, then make sure my table has headers is checked. Everything has been selected correctly. Hit OK. And we have a table. I'm going to go ahead and add some formatting here. Select this. Go to the Home tab. Dollar signs. Remove the sense. And there we go. Now the first thing that I want you to do once you've created a table, a lot of people forget this, is go to Table Design and give it a name. We don't want Table 2. We want TBL. Use that as the prefix. It will make your life much easier. And let's call it Sales. And the reason that you want to do that is because, I'm going to show you real quick, if I go Equal right now and type TBL, I'm going to see all of the tables that I have in this workbook. So that way, if I forget the actual name of it, I can type TBL, see a list of it, and continue making my formula from here. Now, I'm not going to cover table references here, but that's really why you want to rename your table. So the next thing that we want to do, let's go ahead and add a chart. That's pretty easy. Click inside of your table and go to Insert and choose a chart. Let's go for this one. Let's move this guy over. Click the title, hit Delete. And there we go. It's already starting to get pretty interactive. If I go here and I click the drop down arrow, it's a little bit off the screen right now. I can uncheck select all and let's check Deckard and Roy. Hit OK. And we see only the values for Deckard and Roy. But what you may notice is that the chart doesn't quite look so nice. So we can have it filter and update over here. But let's click the chart and go to chart design and hit switch row and column. And there we go. It looks a little bit nicer so that every employee has their own line. But now what I want to do is to get these formulas that we have up here. These formulas that are going to give us the total, the highest, and the lowest values for all of the visible data down here. And let us go up here, right click, insert, and hit control Y a couple more times to get some more rows. And notice that our chart is getting bigger. So one thing we want to do here is to right click the chart. It's off the screen right now, but go to Format Chart Area. And then click this guy right here, Size and Properties. Properties. Don't move or size with cells. Let's keep that chart in one place. And let's clear our filter. So I'm going to click this. Clear filter from employees or click in here go to data and click clear right here to remove all of the filters. Now, what did we want? We want total, highest, and lowest. And for this, we are going to use the great new aggregate function. Now, you could use the subtotal function if you're in an older version of Excel, but let's use aggregate. It's much nicer. So equals aggregate. What do we want? We want the total. 
that will be a sum. So I double click that. It inputs 9, which says, hey, use the sum function. Then comma. Let's go for number 3. This is really great right here. It allows you to control what values you want to ignore in the data set. We're going to ignore the hidden rows, error values, nested subtotal, and aggregate functions. So I double click that, comma. Now a time to select all of this. And we're going to see the table reference, TBL sales, the name of our table, makes it much easier to read this, and then the name of the columns to include, all of January to all of June. Then we can close it up, hit enter, and continue doing that for highest and lowest. So equals aggregate. I want the max three for ignore everything and or everything except for something with the values. Then hit enter and let's go for one more. Aggregate min three and select all of this. And we are getting pretty darn close to having something visually appealing and useful. So I've got total highest and lowest. I'm going to pull it one more over here. And now if we filter, let's go back here and filter only for Deckard, hit OK. These values update, the chart updates, but the chart does not change size. Now let's add the last thing, this right here. And this is called a slicer. What that's going to allow us to do is to avoid having to go like this and then hit the buttons for the filter. So what we can do, let's go data and clear this time to practice that way of doing it. We click inside the table, then we can go to table design and insert slicer. And then we choose which column we want to perform a filter on. So the slicer gives us a visual way to perform filters. We want it on the employee column. So I click that. Okay. And here we go. Now, we'll make it look nice in a moment. If I click Deckard, all I see is the value for Deckard. Roy, the same. If I click this little guy with the check marks, I can make multiple selections at once. Then we can click the filter with the X to clear everything. And click that again to turn that option off. But what I want to do is to make it a little smaller and put it somewhere up here. Let's see if we can make it fit there. So click your slicer, then go to the slicer tab that appears. And the first thing that you want to do is to go to columns, change it from one to two. And then let's change height from 0.26 to something smaller. And let's see if we can get it to fit almost. All right, a little bit bigger. There we go. And we could add one more row here. Even better. And that's really all that you have to do. So we have a table. We have some aggregate functions. We have a chart that is linked to the table. And then we have a slicer. Now one thing I want to leave you with for the slicer is click the slicer, go to slicer, and then go to slicer settings. This window gives you a lot of options for controlling the slicer, and I suggest that you go through it and see what might work for your situation. And the best thing is no VBA, no macros. But remember, if you would like to learn how to automate your workbook and save yourself hours of time every week, then check out my full VBA course. It's over 200 tutorials, over 50 hours of content, over 200 downloadable Excel files with all of the code for every single tutorial and all of the comments as well. It is a comprehensive tutorial that will make it so that you can automate your tasks and save yourself a lot of time. If you're interested, check the link below this video. And it might even be on sale.